Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mark Fishkin, and I am the founder and director of the Mill Valley Film Festival and the California Film Institute. And I'm Zoe Elton, director of programming for Mill Valley Film Festival. Welcome. We are extremely happy to see you here this beautiful afternoon because we have a very special show. We're going to be honoring Paolo Sorrentino and his amazing new film, The Hand of God. Uh, he will be, this is a spotlight program, and he will be given the Mill Valley Film Festival Award later on in the program. Uh, we are really happy to be able to acknowledge our sponsors. We have created a, an amazing partnership with the Italian Cultural Institute, and I'd like to thank Anna Maria De Giorgio for uh, all her significant work in this program, but also for her work uh, with the Institute. Um, now more than ever, it's more important that this is one world and one humanity. And it's organizations that support the arts, uh, whether from Italy or other places, obviously Italy is high art, um, is really, really one of the most important things we could do now when there's so much controversy and division within our world. So thank you for that. I'd also like to acknowledge the Consul General of uh, the Italian Consulate, Sergio Strozzi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your help with this program. Um, Paolo is an incredible director. He's acknowledged internationally as one of the most acclaimed artists, film artists around the world. And again, we are just so lucky to have him here with us. I know, honestly, I think it's a minor miracle. And I also want to just give you, a, give a shout out to Netflix, who started working with us very early this year, at a time when we didn't know whether theaters were going to be open, we didn't know whether anyone was going to be able to travel. And they created the infrastructure really early on to bring someone from Italy. I mean, this is pretty amazing. So. I want to acknowledge Netflix as well. Thank you. But as Mark was saying, Sorrentino, he's like one of those single name people, you know, you know, you know that they're like Cher? Yeah, a little bit like yeah. that, yeah. Same except thing. except her filmmaking isn't quite as good. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but he truly is one of the most masterful filmmakers of his generation. And I feel uh, thankful to him for a lot of things. The one is, I feel thankful to him for continuing in the traditions of cinema that are rooted way back, but that he's brought so thoroughly into his work. Um, I also feel thankful for odd little things, like in youth, he turned me on to David Lang, who's a, an American composer whose work I didn't know. So he has this uh, very sort of full spectrum artistry um, as a cinema maker. And I think that's very evident in this film. Um, it has an autobiographical uh, bent to it. And uh, I think is another time where we see the extraordinary uh, contributions that he's making to cinema. So welcome to the spotlight. you have anything else to say, Mark? No, I think you were very uh, thorough. OK, jolly good. <laughs> Enjoy the film. Thank you. We'll see you later for a very robust program. Good afternoon. Buena sera, everyone. I'm Karen Davis, Senior Film Programmer. It is my honor to welcome to the stage our Italian Council General of San Francisco, Sergio Strozzi, who will say a few remarks about Maestro Sorrentino and then um, present the Mill Valley Film Festival Spotlight Award. Please welcome Sergio Strozzi. Thank you, Karen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. He was born in Naples. I won't say the age because it's not polite, uh, but he's young. His first film, a uh, screenwriter, The Dust of Naples, was released in 1998. His feature length film, Debut, was one man up. Sorry. 
Luomo in più, for which he was awarded the Nastro d'Argento Prize. He achieved international recognition in 2004 for his thriller Le Conseguenze dell'Amore. The film won many awards and was nominated for the Palme d'Or at the 2004 Cannes Film Festival. His next feature, The Family Friend, L'Amico di Famiglia, was presented at the Cannes Film Festival in May and the London Film Festival in October 2006. He's been an actor too. He made his acting debut with a cameo appearance in Nanni Moretti's film, The Caiman, Il Calmano, in 2006. His following film, Il Divo, is a dramat dramatized bio picture of Giulio Andreotti, an Italian politician, uh, former prime minister. The feature, which won the Prix du Jury uh, Cannes Film Festival, sees him reunited with the consequences of love uh, star, Tony Servillo, who plays the part of Andreotti. This must be the place marked is English language feature. The plot centers on a middle-aged wealthy rock star played by Champagne, who becomes bored in his retirement, takes on the quest of finding the guard of the German camp where his father was imprisoned, who now lives in hiding in the United States. 2013 film, The Great Beauty, La Grande Bellezza, won the Oscar. won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film in the 2014 Ag Academy Awards. It also won uh, the Golden Globe for the Best Foreign Language Film and was nominated for the Palme d'Or at the 2013 Cannes Film Festival. Uh, Youth, 2015, is his second English language film and features Michael Caine as a retired orchestra conductor. His 2016 TV series, The Young Pope, starring Jude Law and Diane Keaton, has received three Cannes Lyon, uh, three Venice Film Festival Awards, and four European Awards. In 2018, he released Loro, is a controversial movie based on the life of media tycoon and political former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, once again performed by actor Tony Servillo. After a 2020 American project with Jennifer Lawrence in Mock Girl, 2020, as we said, he now returns to Naples with the Hand of God, recently presented at the 78th Venice Film Festival, winning the Grand Jury Prize. This prolific... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was overwhelmed, so it was unbelievable, very intense. This prolific director is also an acclaimed writer and has published three books in Italy along with short stories. For his achievements in all these creative domains, I, together with the director of the Italian Institute of Culture, Anna Maria Di Giorgio, and uh, uh, with the pleasure of being here at the Mill Valley Film Festival with you, I have the pleasure uh, to ask you to join me in welcoming Maestro Paolo Sorrentino to 2021 Mill Valley Film Festival Spotlight Award. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie. Thank you. È pesa. Pesa. Congratulazioni. Grazie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. A tutti. Yeah, it's heavy. And I thank you, thank you very much. I need to to thank some people very quickly, quicker than my uh, curriculum. Okay. <laughs> so thank you to Mill Valley Film Festival, and um, thank you to Mark Fishkin, Fishkin and Zoe Helton. And thank you to the Italian Consul General Sergio Strozzi, even if he was late. <laughs> uh, thank you to the director of the Italian Cultural Institute of San Francisco, Anna Maria Di Giorgio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Um, thank you. And now please welcome to the stage the director of the Italian Cultural Institute, Anna Maria Di Giorgio, our great friend. And accompanying uh, uh, our interpreter for today will be uh, Lilia Pino Bluan. Please welcome. 
Have a seat. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome uh, lead actor Filippo Scotti on stage. Buonasera Maestro, Sorry. buonasera Filippo, buonasera. Buonasera. benvenuti e benvenuti, welcome to the Mill Valley Film Festival, my name is Anna Maria Di Giorgio, I'm the director of the Italian Cultural Institute in San Francisco and I'm beyond honored to be here with you tonight and the presence and finally in the real, tangible, physical presence after two years of pandemic of the great Italian storyteller and Academy Award winning director Paolo Sorrentino. Grazie Thank ancora you. Paolo, Thank grazie. You Thank you for the honor of being here with us today and for sharing this uh, touching and intimate movie with us, è stata la mano di Dio. And uh, thanks also to Filippo Scotti, that's the very talented rising star who interpreted uh, his role with such grace and sensitivity. Bravo Filippo. Thank you. So, Paolo, before we chat uh, about the film, I'd like to offer a little bit of a, a context, uh, especially for the American audience. And I'll start, if you allow me, with the end of the movie, when we see uh, Fabietto leaving uh, uh, Naples and his childhood towards Rome, uh, wearing a shirt with pale blue and white stripes, the colors of Naples, the colors of uh, Maradona Argentina, and we hear Pino Daniele uh, singing playing a, a very important song, Napoli, what Naples is. Uh, what Naples is. Um, Pino Daniele is a much-loved Napolitan songwriter that died some years ago. I've just translated a small, small section of the song because I think it's important. So, Naples is a bitter sun. Naples is the smell of the sea. Naples is a dirty scrap of paper and nobody cares. And everyone just waits for fate. Naples is known in the world world, but no one knows the truth. Paolo, this, this film uh, seems to be a nod to Naples and its contradictions, uh, but was this movie a nod to Naples and its contradictions? What is your take on Naples? What is Naples really to you? Uh, yes, this movie is not about Naples. It's a, it's a movie about um, people that uh, grew up in Naples, that live in Naples, and so for me, Naples is everything because it's the city where I learned uh, how to live. I found out how the world uh, works. And so, of course, it's the most important uh, city of my life. Yeah. So, do you... I, we notice a lot of contradictions in the movie, like the, the most amazing character, this woman eating mozzarella and seeming the mm -hmm. most vul vulgar people on earth, but then uh, citing Dante at the funeral, no? Yeah. So, you put together all this contradiction, uh, but it seems like uh, it, Naples was so central to you and uh, and for the development of your uh, of your movie. Yeah, yeah. The, the Naples is a, a city um, where I found out the irony. Irony. Uh, that's the most important thing. That's and important uh, for, to share with. <laughs> And um, yes, it's full of contradictions like the people in the movie because this is the beauty of the human being, the beauty also the, the problem that we are full of contradictions, not only in Naples, everywhere. Yeah. So, Filippo, can you tell us uh, a bit about your journey and how you came to work with, uh, with Paolo Sorrentino and what was your reaction when you found out that uh, you were cast in this movie with uh, Tony Servillo and other actors? I received this email in uh, the month of June 2020, and uh, I didn't know it was uh, uh, from, I mean, I mean, for a movie, uh, a Sorrentino's movie. And, uh, and then, yeah, then I started to do some auditions, and uh, yeah, and then I was super, super, super excited. But actually, I would say more scared, not about, <laughs> not <laughs> for Paolo, but for uh, the the responsibility. In fact, uh, at the beginning, I was thinking that was like um, just a, um, a main character of a first part of the movie. You know, I was trying to, you know, uh, change my 
and I changed the direction of my thoughts. But then yeah. I, I realized that was all the, the movie. And, yeah. How was it working with Paolo? It was great, great, because it's everything so, I mean, from the script, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, start with the details because there are so many. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was honored. It was uh, it was amazing to to be in this in this movie and to work uh, with uh, this amazing cast. Thank you, Filippo. Thank, Thank you. you, Paolo. You declared that this uh, film is based on your own uh, life story and that uh, Fabietto is a kind of alter ego of your adolescent self uh, as he confronts with the challenges uh, of coming of age. What uh, was it like to share such an intimate uh, and personal story with the world? Um, how and why did you deci deci decide to make such a personal film, which I imagine must be cathartic, but also painful for you? Uh, because uh, before or then, every uh, filmmaker, I think, that uh, will face uh, his own um, uh, story. The, The most important content uh, of our life uh, is our family, our uh, childhood, where uh, you find out uh, the world, where you understand uh, how the things work and the, how, how you hope that the world will be always the same. Then growing up you find out that the world changed, the people change, and uh, the happiness of your childhood uh, is impossible to reach again. So before or then I think that everybody has the temptation to do this kind of movie and um, I had the hope that my personal story could be a universal story. Everybody could find, uh, of course, not the same things, but uh, everybody has a pain, everybody has a, a tragic moment in his own life that can be referred to, to this movie. Uh, this is my hope. Of course. Thank you, Paolo. And um, Filippo, what was the hardest part of making this uh, intimate uh, movie for you? Um, If there's any, I mean, it was. Yeah, I mean, I um, was. Um, I mean, I tried to um, focus on. I mean, uh, all the the the. the la dico in italiano I will speak in italian I will be fast <laughs> eh, no ho cercato un po' di concentrarmi un po' su, su, sulla sceneggiatura yeah, you can ah, speak oh, eh, scusa sorry ho cercato di concentrarmi sul, sulla sceneggiatura ho cercato di, di seguire le indicazioni di, di, di Paolo ho cercato di allontanarmi un po' dall'idea di uh, interpretare uh, come dire una, appunto la sua, la sua adolescenza ma ho pensato che appunto è, era una, è una sceneggiatura, mi sono avvicinato alla sceneggiatura e l'ho pensata proprio come un, diciamo un, un, ruolo, un ruolo, semplicemente ho cercato di, di, di fare eh, diciamo del mio meglio e ce ne sono state tante di scene diciamo, eh, complicate, eh, la scena nell'ospedale, la scena... Uh, la tu scena... sei stato bravissimo, you were very good. At... Bravo. Gra <ride> la scena, I... della scena insomma, del, insomma del, quando, quando saluto il mio fratello e da strombo, insomma, questa scena qui. Let's give the translator. I tried to focus... I tried to focus on the script and... I tried to focus on the script and follow Paolo's directions and I tried to move away from the idea that I was interpreting his teenage years and just uh, saw it as a script as such. And it was a role, as simple as that. So I tried to do my best with that material. In terms of the scenes, there were very many complicated ones. For example, the one at the hospital or the one in which I say goodbye to my brother in Stromboli. Thank you, thank you. Did you two, did it, the two of you uh, meet many times before uh, before the movie? We met, uh, no, we did... Uh, one, one time? No, we did three, four auditions. Ah, no, the audition. Ah, the audition, no, 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 no. I mean okay. if you like... No, no, okay. we met once. We just wow. did a, a quick read of the reading of the script uh, with the, um, the other um, members of the family. And then we shot the movie, yeah. And... Uh, Why did you choose uh, Fabio? So, sorry, Filippo. Filippo, because uh, he's, uh, he's, no, he's a good actor, he's uh, young, but uh, he looks like uh, an expert and wise uh, actor. 
and um, he is uh, shy uh, and uh, not at ease with the world. It's, it's exactly the memory that I had of myself when I was 18 years old. And um, he has uh, no vices. He's a good guy, and it's um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's important to have uh, somebody that's not a pain in the ass on the on the set. <laughs> yeah. Non lo traduciamo questo in italiano, lasciamo. Ah, is it a bad, bad word? No, no, no. no. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so, Paolo, um, you cite Maradona as one of your sources of inspiration, and you even refer to him on the night uh, you won your Oscar, and implying that Maradona saved your life, in part because of um, the fateful night of your parents' accident, and in part, I, I imagine, because of the almost religious uh, cult status Maradona had. So, um, can you tell us what Maradona really meant to you and to Naples uh, in those years? So why did his significance go so far beyond the world of sports? Maradona, when he arrived in Naples, he was 24 years old and he was um, wildly free. And uh, I was young and uh, he conveyed this idea that the youth could be something uh, uh, that belongs to the free freedom and uh, to the essere selvaggi, to be wild. And uh, this was very important uh, for uh, my generation in Naples, yes. Then Maradona is, means many other things for me, but uh, you, 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 you told some things that means to me Maradona, yeah. Was he a symbol of social redemption too, for social redemption for Naples, for the people of Naples? Maradona, I don't know, it was a, a, a form of social redemption, but uh, it was a you know, hope uh, for us because uh, Naples in the, at the beginning of the 80s was a dark city with many problems and uh, it was a sort of a gift, the fact that the most important um, player of soccer in the world arrived in, in, in a city that never had um, great... Uh, visibility or uh, great importance in the in the world of the sport so it was something now it, it's something of unbelievable for us i don't know how to explain better yeah. i wanted to, to to explain a little bit to the american audience because maybe they didn't know also the story of naples in that in those years and uh, uh, yes uh, did, did 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 you have the time it's maradona it's maradona calling <laughs> finally <laughs> Did you ever speak uh, with Maradona about this movie or did you have the chance no, to, to talk it, with it him? No, it was not easy. Maradona was, uh, mm, was surrounded by um, too many people that uh, put a sort of a wall between mm. him and the world, so it was not easy to reach, to, to, to reach him. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, Filippo, <coughs> another question for you. Can you tell us uh, what was your favorite scene in this movie? The scene you had fun or it was touching or whatever. I, I, I loved uh, when we shot the family scene. <laughs> yeah, I lo I loved we, we loved moment. it too. It was very it was funny. It was, uh, I, I had uh, so much fun and uh, I, I tried to, to, lear to, to learn as much as I could from uh, everyone. And uh, yeah, it, it was great, the, 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 the family scene, and then the, when we were on the boat, yeah, I, I loved that scene. Can you tell us something funny that happened on the set during uh, that? Many things, I... Uh, <laughs> I uh, With such a cast, I, I, I mean, something... I, I, I remember that... Uh, I, no, actually, I don't remember specifically, but uh, I, I, I laughed a lot with my with my brother in the movie Marlon, sì. uh, Marchino, and then uh, with, uh, with uh, the actor Franco Pinelli that, uh, I mean, we, we had uh, lo lots of fun together. Thank you, thank you, Filippo. So, um, Paolo, in addition to the two Napolitan cult figures we talked about, Maradona and Pino Daniele, uh, there are also references to religion and Napolitan folklore. So, like San Gennaro, that's the patron of, of Naples, patron saint of Naples, and Omonaciello, a little monk. 
that's a trickster spirit, uh, and uh, he makes appearances uh, in the film. What made you want to include them? Monacello e San Gennaro. Cosa voglio? Per, perché hai, hai deciso di includere due miti del folklore napoletano, un santo e... Because it's something that really happened. My aunt uh, saw at the bus stop uh, San Gennaro, she, she said. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's true. And she said that San Gennaro asked her to join her in the car. And, uh, and in the real life, uh, San Gennaro brought her to to the house where she lived, and she was not able to have um, uh, children. children. And San Gennaro said, uh, don't worry, since tomorrow you could have uh, children. And it uh, happened. I, uh, I, this is what my aunt told, told me. And, um, and the, even in my family, my father and other my relatives, uh, have seen uh, when they were young uh, the little monk uh, in the small street of Naples, in a vicoli, I don't know. So I come from a family that, uh, ex other than me, uh, all of them uh, uh, are, uh, have a, a great relationship with the uh, ghosts. ghosts. Yeah. Other than you. Other than me. Yeah. So. And I. Uh, how can I say? I feel uh, that it's a problem that I never saw. And so I put my ghosts in the movies. You felt excluded. You felt excluded, mm. yeah. I wanted to ask you if you put these characters, uh, I mean, you saw the, in, in the movie, you saw the Monacello, and uh, your own saw the Monacello. And it seems to me these two characters were the two visionary characters of the movie, the ones who had visions or. Can it be also because, as you said, reality is losy, and so you were trying to find... Maybe, yes. The reason why Fabietto, me, Fabietto looks uh, the little man at the end of the movie is not because he is able to see the ghosts, but uh, it's exactly what I said before. He is able to see the monk because the monk, uh, for him, is a symbol of creativity. It's something that does not exist, but that he can see. And this is the reason why he would love to be a director. But Thank in you. my real family, they, they, they really... They actually see. Yeah, yeah. It's important. It's important. <laughs> Filippo, uh, what projects do you have coming up next? Um, no one. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> it's just the first and last movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you. I, I close this uh, bracket. <laughs> no, for real, no one. For real? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to go to university or? Uh... No, no, I'm already studying, but uh, I'm just uh, I'm just waiting and uh, to see what happens. deciding, and that's all. Okay, yeah. okay, thank you. And uh, Paolo, in addition to being a director, you're also an author. And uh, what is the relationship between your lit literary writing and the writing you do for films? And did the pandemic affect your writing both? For movies and for... No, the, the relationship is very simple. I do movies. When uh, I can't do movies, I write a book. So I am not a book writer. I am a writer when uh, I can't do movies. Okay. So it happened uh, three times and I wrote uh, books. Yeah. <laughs> but did you, did you write in the pandemic? As you no, 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 no. It was not easy to write uh, during uh, the pandemic it's for, a common for problem. me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Write and reading was sort of blocked during yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I really uh, thank you very, very much thank for uh, this you. opportunity that you granted us. Uh, I think uh, we were all very struck by this amazing movie. And um, I would, uh, an applause for uh, Fabio, uh, for, uh, sorry, for Filippo. Filippo. <laughs> and for thank you, thank you very much. Ah, no, Paolo, sorry, sorry. I have a final question. I, it's my personal, there my curiosity, a final, a final question for you. Yes. Yes. 
Um, after the song Pino Daniele, during the final credits, I yeah. saw the movie before. Uh, there, there's a sound like lapping of waters or a volcano. We don't, I don't know. Which it's the sound of the Stromboli, the Stromboli. volcano. Yeah, yes. I, that's, that's a really something I wanted yes. to know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our time together has unfortunately come to an end. I want, I want to once again thank Paolo Sorrentino and Filippo for being here with us today and for. Uh, Grazie, grazie, Thank grazie you. davvero. Thank you very much. And for their support and collaboration, many thanks to Netflix, Mill Valley Film Festival, the Consul General of Italy, Sergio Strozzi, my collaborators, uh, and thank you all, grazie for your attention. Stay safe, enjoy the rest of the evening, arrivederci.